Lady Azura, might I entice you over here for a little chat? Uh... What's the matter? You don't look busy right now. Surely you can spare a moment. It's not that. It's just... What in the world do you and I have to discuss? Why, we could talk about any number of things. Niles, I'm not trying to be rude, but you have a reputation for being inappropriate. That I do. But fear not, my lady. I swear to keep my tongue under tight rein with you. I would never want to bring you disgrace by exposing those lovely ears to my filth. Are you being serious? You have my word. I have to confess, I'm a little shocked. I never knew you could be such a gentleman. Well, give me a chance sometime. There's more I'd like to explain, but not just yet. All right, Niles. I'll wait. Lady Zora, I'm sorry I left you hanging the other day. Our conversation ended on a mysterious note, didn't it? Let me explain. You see, I believe that you and I are cut from the same cloth. Do you? And how exactly is that? Well, you don't have to look so horrified. At least allow me to finish. You and I have both experienced real suffering unlike most of the idiots we know. What do you mean? As a child, I was abandoned by my parents and had to fend for myself in the slums. Before Lord Leo accepted me as his retainer, I was literally living in the gutter. I had no idea! It's left me a low tolerance for people who lack compassion. I cannot stand shallow people. I try to avoid them at all costs. I understand. I know you do. I can tell that you were different from the others, my lady. In fact, I got the impression that your childhood was no picnic either. You keep your distance by being aloof while I actively drive people away. The more people I offend, the fewer I have to put up with. See? We're quite the same. You have a point there. I thought we should be friends since we've got so much in common. I'm a little surprised by all this, but I'm glad to give you a chance. Good. We'll talk soon then. I look forward to it. Me too, Niles. Niles, so we meet again. Yes. So... Uh... Hmm... This is awkward. I have no idea what we should talk about. I usually try to avoid making idle chit-chat. I know what you mean. I can think of a hundred ways to make someone cringe. When it comes to small talk, I'm at a loss. Uh, we're like porcupines, aren't we? Porcupines? Yes. We've armed ourselves with barbs to drive other people away. Even if I wanted to get close to someone, I'd probably stab them on accident. I'd prefer to think of myself as a rose, not a porcupine, but I see what you mean. Making friends is hard, isn't it? It doesn't have to be. No? Honestly, Niles, I feel closer to you already. You've shown me another side to you. I think we're doing well for two porcupines. Any closer, and we'll only injure each other. Ah, that's fair. We should probably keep a safe distance, then. Yes. Perhaps we should discuss the weather. Isn't that what others do? I believe you're right. Hmm. I rather enjoy sunny days like this, don't you? Yes, but my favorite are snowy winter mornings. I get up early and make cocoa. Niles, is something wrong? You have a very serious look on your face. I need to be honest with you. Hold on right there. Is that what I think it is? This... it's a ring. That better not be a wedding ring! Would that be such a problem? Lady Azura, you're all I can think about. Let's slow down for a minute and discuss this like two reasonable adults. Niles, I do have feelings for you, but we've barely managed to discuss the weather. It's like you said. If we get too close, we'll only end up hurting each other. Who says we have to get any closer? But you said... I don't want to ruin what we have now, and neither do you. This ring is a sign of my commitment to you. I want to be with you forever, even if it must be from a safe distance. Do you really mean that? I'm so grateful we found each other. I'll treasure this ring, and you, always. Thank you, my lady. I never expected to find such happiness. 